What's up guys? Porter Doctor back again. Hey, remember my last video? Hit the subscribe button. Also, you're going to have to excuse the hair. I forgot my hat at the house. And the raccoon eyes. I was outside with my glasses on today. Uh, also, funny shirt for today. It's where I got my doctor degree. Yeah. They taught me four-wheeler mechanics. Alright guys, today we're working on... Oh, 750 Brute Force. This is actually a 2021 model. About a new one, 170 something miles on it. And we're going to be doing a snorkel on it. Uh, I see a couple videos online of various people doing these and really doing some crazy stuff to them. But um, I'm going to kind of go along the lines of the way we used to do the old ones with the uh, three rubber boots across the top, rubber boot onto the air box and then i bought this boot here this is actually off of a 700 uh, v-twin um i can't even remember what the name of the bike is but the racing style bike that uses pretty much the same motor and this thing will tie right onto your air box and allow a hole for a two inch pvc to slide in works great the part number for it if you need it 14073-1851 and um, I'm like I said, I'm also going to do a radiator relocate on this. So I'm going to probably take a little bit more off than you normally would. But really, these plastics on these things aren't pull, hard to pull off. I'm going to probably pull this uh, front fender off just to get a little extra access to it. But uh, to start off with, we need to get these side panels off. But to get those off, you have to take these both black covers off the sides. And you should be able to leave the uh, floorboards on. But black covers on the side side panels and this piece off we'll probably pull the air box out too so let me get all that stuff apart and i'll cut the camera back on in a second all right i want to show you some of these hidden bolts on these things um there's a, a bolt right here or a screw right here you got to take out under this black cover uh one right here those are the same on both sides you have to take these three out the, the side here to get the side cover off there's two on this side that you have to pull off the floorboard one up here at the top one here at the air box and naturally the one there on that black trim uh go around to the other side same deal you only got one down here on the floorboard still three here the one hidden one here one there the black nut that holds the um ignition switch in and then there's also a 12 millimeter nut on the bottom of the uh shifter here you have to break it loose uh just a jam nut to get it off and now uh, I'm gonna pull this stuff off, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and pull this front fender off too. It's just two more bolts up here, the four bolts that hold the uh, rack on, those are 12 millimeters, just to get in here. The difference between these bikes and the older ones is there's a, the, most of the electronics are up here in the front as opposed to under the seat like the old ones used to be. So we've got to get access to that, those plastic pieces in there and cut some holes out so our snorkel can come up through. And like I said, I was going to do a uh, radiator relocate on this one anyway, so pulling the front plastics off will make it that much more easier to get the radiator out. Uh, not much to getting them off, like I said before. Uh, unplug the the headphone, headphone, headlight wires uh, here. Uh, take a few of these plastic clips off here and here to get this splash guard out of the way. And... I think we'll have to pull the, there is a screw, a uh, Phillips head screw on the bottom of your headlight here. You have to remove that on both sides and the front plastic and headlights will come all off at one time. So I'm going to get all that off and pull this plastic off and I'll cut the camera back on and let you see what it looks like. Alright guys, back on the brood again. As you can see I got the front fender off. You really don't have to take that off but it's a whole lot easier if you do. But they're not too bad to take off. So, um... What we're going to do next, we got to move some stuff around up here so we can get the actual snorkels to come out. But the next thing I like to do is go ahead and pull the air box off. Uh, two 10 millimeter bolts, one here and then one right down in there. Uh, you got a couple hoses you have to pull off. Don't have to really worry about where those go because they're a um, good bit different in size so they'll only go in one, one way. Um, and also up under here, what I like to take off is that bottom clamp um, you can see the screw right there you don't have to remove it all the way just loosen the clamp same thing with the front um, just loosen that bottom one up the air box once you get all that loosened up 
the air box will can, will pull up and then you'll have a crankcase vent here it's a larger size hose you can kind of see it through there and then there's also one plug there for like a um, uh, air sensor or something like that it goes into the air box you need to unplug all that and uh, and at that point the air box will come right off I'm gonna get all this stuff loosened up and have it to where I can just pick it up I'll cut the camera back on just to show you what it looks like to pull it off all right guys we got to excuse the crickets tonight they're extremely loud out here but I've got all these all the bolts loose and uh, a couple hoses pulled off the side over here so now you can just pull this air box pretty much straight up you see it comes up there and it's the crankcase vent hose is still attached on the bottom you can take a pair of pliers and grab that clamp there slide it down crankcase vent will slide off and also that uh, air sensor wire is still connected it's got a little uh, push piece you push in on it and it'll pop right off but at that point your air box will slide right off it does have um, one more vent not actually not a vent this is a drain that runs down the right front side up here it's got a little clip that holds it in it just bends around the hose so that pulls off if you've never if you got a brute you never drain this thing out you might ought to especially if you do many wheelies on it uh, this will really tell you how much has been done on it if it's uh or it could be overfilled with oil but this thing usually pours out oil if you do a lot of wheelies on one so uh, let's see what this the life of this four wheelers look like oh looks pretty good don't think they've been wheelie in this one much that's a surprise all right with this air box off uh main reason to get it off is we have to pull this cover off of here uh three the older model was actually have four uh, Allen head, or, I'm sorry, Phillips head screws, pretty good size. You have to pull those off. I'll see if I can do it real quick while I got you on camera here. Show you what it looks like. And this is where one of our rubber couplers are going to tie in to tie the in intake snorkel to the hard pot. So just pull these four screws out. You don't really need to replace them, and you don't need this thing anymore. Um, so your your uh, rubber coupler is going to fit around here, and then we'll run the uh, run the hose or the tubing on up to the front. The one of the main differences between these bikes and the older ones is uh, this this box here is not on the older bikes, nor is the um, CDI and this is the engine brake and uh, four wheel drive actuator controller are not up here in the way. So uh, you just pull these up. They have a little, little piece, a little tab of plastic there that kind of holds it on with a rubber, rubber boot, and they'll pull right up. See the eyes a little tougher. And what we're trying to do, we've got to clear this area out here to get our snorkels to come up. Snorkels will come up this way in front of this harness, and then over here. So we're gonna have to trim this out. It's just plastic, kind of flimsy plastic. Um, it does have a push pin in it right there. So, all right, guys, I got some of the wires moved out of the way here. I'm trying to figure out how much I need to cut out of this plastic piece here. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this uh, <clears throat> uh, intake for the uh, clutch off the belt. I mean, it has these little push pin or push connectors here. Squeeze them with a, a pair of pliers, and they'll come right out. So I got all those loose. Loosen up your clamp here on the front. And it should slide right out, just like that. <coughs> Comes right off there. So that exposes uh, more of this plastic piece here. Uh, like I said before, the snorkels are coming up here in the front. But if you cut all this out the front, there's nothing to hold this back part here. So uh, what I'm probably going to end up doing is cutting around this edge here all the way this piece is separate here come all the way up to where it breaks down here in the front you can see that red mark there cut along that red mark all the way over here to the side to here and then cut her along the inside here as well uh, I've found the best thing to cut this stuff with is a Dremel If you don't have a Dremel go ahead and buy you one because you'll thank me later for various things but um they made this little bit for it uh, 
I think it's made to cut drywall with. They used to make a tool called a roto zip, and they still may make it, but I never bought one. But this thing works the same. You uh, crank the RPM up on this thing, and it will chew up some plastic. Cut right through it. It um, it's not the best for cutting your snorkel holes out because it gets a little jagged. But uh, just for cutting plastic like this, it whips right through it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cover up these uh, the throttle bodies on here just to keep any of the little black plastic shards from getting slung around. But um, I'm going to cut this out. I'll cut the camera back on when I get it cut. All right, guys, I got it cut up. I did pull the push pins out of here. I was going to see if I could pull this thing out of here in uh, two pieces. Not sure if it's going to work or not, but we'll see. There you go. Cut that part out of the back piece here. And just so you know, on the uh, old bikes, the older body style bikes, this do, it doesn't even have a plastic piece down here. Um, and I can about bet you what this is for. Uh, on these old bikes, what you'd run into a lot of times with that um, piece that we took off of the front of the air box. I don't know where the air box is right now. The piece that we took off the front of the air box here what would happen when you splash through water or anything like that it would splash up on your exhaust pipe and the steam would come up and would sometimes choke these bikes down when when they ingested that steam um so this here is just another layer of protection it could still happen but uh this is just another layer of protection to um keep that steam from getting up into the intake and choking the bike down uh, i've never had it happen to one of mine but uh i could really see where it could happen all right, so got all this cut out. Hopefully, that's going to be plenty enough room for us to uh, get our snorkels in. And really, the only difference between this snorkel kit or this snorkel little setup I've got here and the one that, um, there's something. Look at here. See that? How in the world does a freaking sock? Get an intake. I didn't put that in there. I don't know. This cat that owns this bike, he's a character anyway. That doesn't surprise me. But I promise I didn't put that in there. I don't even know how a sock could get sucked up in there. But that's neither here nor there. This is not a CSI um, investigation because I'm not even going to try to figure that out. But anyway, the only difference between these bikes and the, well, a few differences, but not, not very many, the older ones is the old bikes had a uh, boot that come off here and you could tie your um, tie your PVC pipe right into the boot and in this case we're not going to be able to do that we'll tie the PVC into this boot so it's going to cause or makes a couple different fittings that I have to use that I didn't normally use on the old ones um, also one other thing I've got to pull off is this uh, exhaust CVT exhaust uh, clamp here uh, we will need to reuse that clamp for the boot that we have. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that off. And I'm going to see what I got as far as fittings go and line them up and see if I can halfway mock it up on here to show you what we're going to be dealing with. Cut the camera back on in a sec. All right, guys. Uh, so I got it kind of mocked up here. The boot that we got here, that comes off of a, a 700 Kawasaki racing bike. That's part number for it. I'll leave a... Um, uh, link below or a comment below as to what the number is and this is the belt uh, intake I'm sorry belt exhaust side this is what I got rigged up this is just loose in here I don't have any of this stuff glued together which I always put it together first mark everything take it apart glue it paint it stick it back on so uh, just to give you a rundown of what we got got a little 3 inch stub a 45 a 4 inch stub a 90 there's an inch and a half stub. You see my lines line up there. Inch and a half stub in here, and then another 90, and that would get you to your riser that would stick up out of the plastic. Usually they're about eight or ten inches long. You can make them any length you want. What I normally do on these is when the risers come up, I'll take and have a, one of those rubber couplers. Uh, I don't have one right here with me, but I'll show it to you later. Rubber couplers, three rubber couplers across, across here. Main reason in that is uh couple things you can adjust your riser height with the rubber couplers on also if you happen to hit anything with the rubber coupler uh, it acts as a little bit of a shock absorber in here it'll let the top wobble around and not break the snorkel on down I've seen these before where um, 
riding along somewhere and hit something and it break the snorkel you know it'd be um solid all the way down it'll break it down here and then you got to go through five mud holes to get back to the truck so fill your motor up with oil or water and all that stuff so um that's why i put those on and like i say you can change out your snorkel height um with that so that's the uh belt exhaust side i'm gonna move that out of the way just so you can see it the other is the belt intake it's down here we've got a street 90 uh, i'm gonna have to pull that off there because i can't see what size we got a little stub a 45 another stub a 90 and it runs over that's gonna come out the center here to another 90 down there and then uh this riser it's actually off just a little bit i try to line it up about centered up with the um, steering shaft and that's another thing the rubber coupler gives you a little bit of uh, a little bit of wiggle room that you can put the coupler on there and you can move it a little side to side to make your snorkels come out uh just square and then the the um engine intake all it is is this this tube here it's a i think that's about a 10 inch stub i just stuck something on there i'm going to trim those up later uh let me see if i can wiggle this thing out of here a 90 and a street 45 i did take this street 45 you can see where it's uh got some little scratch marks on it these things have these little ridges on them and this street 45 is going to go into this three inch rubber coupler about like this and just to make sure i don't have any spots where it may leak i grind those little uh nipples off just so you got a good uh flat surface to clamp to and that is the three inch uh coupler i actually cut the bellows off because this pipe's actually not naturally not three inches but the two inch pipe will fit just inside of here so i cut those off uh this is actually the top piece you can see i cut it off a little bit of a lip on the um or a little bit shorter on the top side and then the bottom has a little bit more of a lip on it where it's um cut out there you go and so you want to what you want to do is try to have this one when it's square and then this one here is actually going to be at a little bit of an angle compared to the um compared to the bottom of the air box and that'll that's probably going to work that's i'm just going kind of off eyeballing it of what i've done in the past uh, i'm gonna go ahead and get this air box stuck back on here and make sure everything's looks like it's going to line up before i take everything back off and um and glue it together but i will cut the camera back on in just a second to show you what the uh lengths are on that belt intake so hang on just a sec all right guys the belt intake on this thing we used a street 90 a three inch stub a 45 four and a half inch stub another 90 five inch stub 90 and that one's eight inches i may have to uh, trim it up a little bit just to get the uh, riser height right uh as hard as this thing is to tie into that um that factory boot down there i'm probably going to cut this um four and a half inch stub here and put one of these rubber couplers in it just to make it easier to get in and out of there because uh, this it's going to be a little bit tough to squeeze in without being able to wiggle this thing around to get that boot in or get that in the boot so i'm gonna probably cut this in two and stick one of these couplers in it so um i'm gonna get this mocked up again and just have it loose on the bike and then i'll show you what it looks like so we can get the uh front plastics trimmed out and i don't know i might not do that i might go ahead and uh get it mocked up pretty close well i, I still need to stick the plastic on i'll cut the camera back on let's show what it looks like all right guys i kind of got it mocked up here i may end up um well i know i'm going to end up making a longer tube on here to get it on up because these tubes need to stick above the black trim piece that goes around here but uh this is about where i'm going to trim this out you can kind of see the line here where the black trim piece the edge of the black trim piece is you definitely don't want to get outside of that but i know these are have clearance here but what you got to think about is you put that rubber coupler on there and by the time you put two of them side by side that thickness there has got to be made up somewhere so see that rubber coupler will fit on there like that but the second one will not fit next to it so i'm probably cutting out a little extra here but uh, that's just what i'm going to cut out on both sides and that'll give us plenty enough room to at least get these through the front plastics 
and then we will uh, work on trimming that trim piece up next so cut that out again with my dremel and the little roto zip thing so uh, let me cut those out i am staying just shy of these holes here they honestly really don't do a whole lot i've left those out before on bikes and it really not make any difference but you do not want to cut this center hole out because that does that's pretty much well one of the things that holds your uh, trim piece in there's two other bolts behind the handlebars that hold it in as well so let me get these cut out i'll get some uh the right size risers on here and then we'll look at uh kind of trimming up that black piece as i got all these risers up here pretty level i'll uh, get you the measurements on those in a little bit and we're going to start out by cutting this black piece out about like i got it marked there uh, i'm pretty sure the pipes are going to run a little bit wider here what i normally try to do is just get it where i can get it started over the pipes and then take and um, mark it with a sharpie to give a little bit of an edge around it and round these edges out sometimes around the bottoms out too it just makes it look a little cleaner so i'm going to cut that chunk out first and then we'll see how or what kind of fine trimming we got to do all right guys here's the final trim up i'm missing one of these rubber boots um uh actually got somebody on the way to the hardware store to pick me up one so i've got to put another boot on here but you kind of get the gist of it see our hole here lines up uh got it close and then what i take is take the sharpie and lay it up against the side of the pipe and trim around or in uh, mark around this and that lets you get that little contour there to where it looks like it really almost factory matches the pipe and you can try to get fancy and do these little pieces up in here but um that's a, takes a lot of time and then this side's the same way the snorkel will be over like that and um uh, i still got to put the rest of the the side pieces on but this is pretty much enough to uh to get it very very close the only issue i normally have with it because see this is actually still dropped down a little bit is it will be pulled up sometimes i have to go back and trim just a little bit around the top sides of these as that piece uh rotates up it may have a little bit of a clearance issue there again same thing just uh take and run the dremel sorry run the sharpie around there to mark it and then uh cut it with the dremel so uh, i'm gonna pull all this back off get everything glued together and uh painted and i will cut the camera back on with our next step i'm probably going to uh, go ahead and get all this stuff drying and while it's drying i will run a vent lines for this thing and i have to redo the uh, drain for the air box and i think that's about it so let me go ahead and get all that stuff done i'll cut the camera back on in a little bit all right guys i'm getting ready to glue these things back together uh and this is what i normally do it really don't matter on this end because you got a stub but i go through and mark them and then show how deep it is in there because i know it worked perfect um the way it is now so i make sure i get all that line back up um you know to make sure you once you glue it back together you line those tick marks up and then uh to paint these things i ha haven't had real good luck with um painting right up to the edge and using a rubber boot or one of those couplers so i usually take some electric tape and tape around the edge of it you can use any tape i just use electric because i got some big wide pieces tape that up so that you can leave a, a bare section uh, at, at the end and then on these risers here because uh, I've used those rubber couplers before and they'll actually kind of glue themselves together with the um, pipe if you just paint all the way up to the edge so that's another little tip that I normally do so let me get all this stuff pulled apart and I will get it painted up and we'll cut, cut the camera back on with the next step all right guys we're going to work on running some of these vent lines up I hope you can hear from fan over there but i'm gonna try to make it quick all right these vent lines are kawasaki's pretty smart they did run them all up here uh up on the handlebars well most of them up here on the handlebars and to be honest with you my four-wheeler i have never had this uh display go underwater usually when you get that deep in the water the front end comes up and you can kind of water wheelie out of it and a lot of times that's what i would do to keep my snorkels high but still we're going to run these up to at least uh the handlebars up here by the grips some people run them up the up the actual snorkels i think it looks a little goofy like that so uh i normally just try to kind of hide mine up on the grips and leave them there there again very seldom does that ever go under water so the two hoses that you really got to be concerned with uh this one was uh tied in here this is the rear diff vent it's a pretty good size hose and then the other one is the front diff vent which is right here there was also one other hose here that was tied in and that really don't make any sense but it was tied into the frame and so it goes through the frame here 
it loops up and ties up here and then it also looped down and, and tied off the front here and the best I can figure that's in there for is because there's actually one more vent line back here on your on your um, gas tank right here it's a ball looking thing with a little elbow you you have to run that thing up that's actually your vent for your fuel tank pull it out like that out of your out of your frame and then I normally get a barbed fitting stick in here and then run a quarter inch line all the way up to the front uh, there again up to the handlebars to uh, to vent that so really you'll go, you're gonna wind up with with three vent lines uh, this will be a smaller one these are a little bit bigger what I normally do on these two is just take a T tee, tee them up tee them up and just run one line up uh, normally I run them up into here just run one line here zip tie it around you know zip tie it down your handlebars and then run your other vent line over here zip tie it up so uh, I'm gonna get those tied up and I will um, I'll cut the camera on when I get done with it just to show you what the finished product looks like alright guys that's the vent for the gas tank just stick a, uh, a barb fitting in the end of it here and then run out with some quarter inch line I'm gonna run that on up to the front I do have the other piece you see the hose sticking out right there that's for the um, front diff and rear diff they're pulled into here uh, teed them together right here so I have plenty of plenty of hose for that just needed probably a I don't know foot foot and a half piece of hose to extend it up and <clears throat> I'm going to run the um, fuel tank line up to the other side so we get that knocked out and I'll cut the camera back on the next step all right guys now we're going to work on this uh, vent or actually drain I'm sorry for the air box uh, this is all it is right now. This is uh, like a little duck bill, and it's not waterproof by no means. Some people don't even do anything with these when they snorkel them, and that's not good. Um, some people fill them up with silicone. Problem you have there, you can't hardly get up in here to this thing if you did put get water in your air box and needed to drain it. So what I do is put a, um, um, I guess you could call it a remote drain. This is a piece of 5-inch, five 5-8-inch five heater hose. And it will fit right over that nipple pretty tight there i think this is actually a little bit long i'm gonna probably cut a probably get a foot long piece out of it um i'll put a clamp on the top part up here by the uh box and then i use one of these little this is a um actually a push type uh pet cock for actually for airline but it fits in this 5 8 inch hose perfect like that and then you put a clamp on that and holds it and that way if you ever get anything in your air box water or whatever gas you can uh spin this your pet cock and drain that out and then cut it back off and you don't even have to get up in there and get all dirty or whatever and it'll actually come out when you're done it comes out about right here um right right above the um the belt box and that's the way i do it so i uh, just want to show you that i'm gonna get all this stuff uh stuck back together and i'll cut the camera back on in a little bit all right guys I've got everything painted up and one of the snorkel pieces there's one there's one all right so now we're gonna uh, work on putting this thing back together uh, got our uh, vent lines run up here to the handlebars one here one here um, also before I forget about it I'm gonna go ahead and stick a little bit of dielectric grease on your spark plugs uh, the rear boot is a lot easier to get to now since that uh, exhaust snorkels out of the way and the front ones right here so just take and shoot you some up in there I actually had an explosion of my uh, dielectric grease holder and uh, so I had to put it in a medicine jar but anyway smear some of that in there stick it back on um, get your air box back on you got to make sure you hook up your crankcase vent line that's down here it slides on with a little clamp that um, you can compress with a pair of vice grips I mean a pair of pliers I'm sorry and then there's a plug down here for a uh, air sensor make sure that both of those are plugged in easiest thing to uh or easiest way i found to get this air box on is to start with the front boot and you have to push it pretty hard forward to get that back boot to line up and then get it to slide down and once it slides on there it it pops on pretty good it's not um there's no real pressure holding it actually i don't even have it tight right now but it's it's still down on to the uh to the boots you want to make sure it goes all the way down you can see uh, here it's all the way down onto the throttle body there's not a lip there um, you need to make sure it's pressed all the way down to the lip the other thing to do is uh, you got a couple hoses over here to hook up um, big one here 
that slides on that nipple and then a smaller one here that slides on the nipple right above it make sure those get hooked up and we've still got our um our drain still here i'm going to cut it just a little bit shorter and uh put our where's my little um pet cock right here slide this back up in there and put a clamp on it and so let me get that air box tightened back down we still got to put the two uh bolts in it one here and one over on this side and um i'll get our drain put in and i've left this boot loose just so i can wiggle it around a little bit to make sure it gets in the right location i'm gonna probably slide that intake snorkel in first and um get it tightened up i'll get it slid up in there and let you see about where it needs to look like on your bike if you're doing this so all right cut the camera back on in a sec all right guys this is the uh engine intake just to show you about where it sits it's just above the um coil down here the clamp is right through here right below that bolt and the top part here is kind of kicked back just a little bit off of the um off of the boot i mean off of the nipple that sticks off the the air box but the nipple comes all the way out here so our clamps on there are good um some people have taken put some silicone on these things but in my experience with these putting silicone on them uh actually will make them slip off i know that sounds kind of crazy but it's got a pretty good bit of pressure on it you put silicone on there to kind of squeeze it it'll squeeze the the boot off of the air box and if you tighten those clamps down pretty tight, I mean, they're made to hold water, so um, uh, they they seal up pretty good. I've never had any trouble with uh, with them coming off um, or leaking. Just the biggest thing is to make sure that bottom clamp down there is pretty well lined up with the bail that's on that 45, that street 45 that's in here. And uh, as you can see, that's pretty tight. The boot's flexing around as it moves, but um, it's pretty tight. So, all right, next one we're going to do is the center um, center snorkel, and that's the belt intake, which ties into here. Let me grab it, and uh, I will uh, cut the camera back on when I get it slid all in there to show you what it looks like. All right, here's how I ran my um, hose up for that belt intake. I did have to remove the coolant hose or coolant tank here to get this fished up in there, but it will bolt back up in there. See the bolt in it? Um, so make sure your elbow is pushed all the way into this factory boot. I uh, did have a put a rubber coupler in here. Um, in this, I think this is a four and a half or five and a half inch section and runs right over top of the coolant hose, the coolant tank. I don't know why I keep saying hose. Um, and then comes up through the center here. It needs to slide over just a little bit more, but, uh, I'm going to keep it loose until I get the, um, the plastics on so I can do my final adjustments. And then all I have to do is come in and tighten these clamps here up and the clamp down in the bottom. I may have to wiggle this one around just a little bit more to get it right. So um, let me get the belt exhaust snorkel now, show you where it runs, and I'll cut the camera back on this. So. All right, now I left the easiest one for last. Um, you can see where it ties in here. You will have to get a hose clamp for this uh, boot here. I didn't, I don't think I covered that in the parts list, but... Uh, it comes up through this old hole that the old belt uh, intake was on. Comes over top of these relays here. Actually, that relay needs to go under it. And gets up here close. There again, I'm going to leave it kind of loose so I can wiggle these around and make sure I get them in the right location. But that's pretty much it. Um, I'll throw the plastics on here now. Still got to finish up the radiator relocate I'm doing on this one too. So I'm going to throw that together real quick. And then I'll uh, get the plastics back on. And cut the camera back on to let you show my to show you my final adjustments on the snorkels and putting the risers on and all that stuff. But uh, stay tuned for the next episode. All right, guys, there you go. That's the money shot. Got it all put back together. <clears throat> Everything went back together real good. Uh, there are a couple things, or well, maybe one thing I might change just a little bit different, and I may um, or I will uh, adjust the measurement. But uh, this tire over here on this side is pretty close to get to hitting that snorkel there. Uh, it's as you can see, these aren't real uh, wide tires or real. They don't have any um, overhang off the side of them, so it will clear 
Um, as you can see there, you still got an inch or so clearance. But uh, if I run any kind of wide tires, like an outlaw or something like that, uh, that that could happen to catch this thing, what I'd probably end up doing is uh, reducing this uh, width of the the stub that comes out of that 90. Uh, and I'll change that in the, um, or I will update that in my um, list below of all the items you need and the lengths of all the pieces. So uh, just cut that a little shorter on yours and uh, everything still should go together fine. Like I said, that rubber coupler gives you a little bit of, a little bit of wiggle room. Uh, everything else went together real well. Um, took me a little bit of time on this thing and it, and it may take you uh, a little while to get this together, but just take your time and uh, you'll wind up with a pretty good product. Uh, I've, I've done a lot of these kits before, uh, snorkel kits and all. And other than some of those uh, manufacturers out there that do have the fancy risers that come up, uh, that's about the only advantage to going with one of those kits because uh, I have used some before and it come in a box with just fittings and um, pay you know a couple hundred dollars for it when you could go to the hardware store and, and get all this stuff for uh, less than half that. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure the exact figure I paid for this stuff and the way prices of, uh, of PVC or any pipe for that matter are right now is pretty high, but, um, uh, still didn't break the bank and, uh, still come out cheaper. Even with, uh, my labor on this, they'd probably still come out cheaper than the 250 $280, whatever these normally run. So, uh, works fine. Say the, there's my rubber couplers on there. It's got, Got some wobble to it, but they not enough to shake around when you drive it. They're they're pretty tight, uh, and you can adjust the heights on these things. These are cut at uh, ten inches long. The center one was just a little bit higher because the center pipe didn't stick up quite as much. It's about ten and a half inches, and you can change these elbows if you want to. Mine my bike's actually got some forty fives on it. Uh, some people like to have them turned down. Various things you can do whatever you want. Um, and putting those rubber couplers on there allows you to change that very easily. So that's pretty much it. Hope you guys like my video. Hit the like button. Subscribe. Check out my other videos. I'll uh, I'll link this one up with up my other brute force stuff I got on here, motor builds and stuff like that. And this other stuff comes in. I will um, uh, send out some more videos. I got a couple Rincon valve adjustment I got to do and a rancher valve adjustment. I may put both of those on there. Pretty easy to do, but um, still, um, I'm working on it, so I may as well put a video up. All right, guys. You, you guys have a good night.